Assalamualaikum. Kita ada <coughs> dengar saya tak? Dengar doktor. Ha uh, clear tak? Clear. Okey, kita ada 23 orang je lagi baru ni masuk saya jadi 22 orang. Terus kejaplah ya. Sekarang pukul dan lagi 2 minit. Pagi-pagi memang lambat eh. <coughs> Masturina ni siapa? Memang ada nama Masturina ke? Ya Wan? Eh? Masturina? Ada eh? Saya tak perasan pula. Siapa Masturina ni? Memang ada ke? Ada. Ada eh? Nama Masturina? Ada. Oh ok ok. Sorry sorry. Saya tak perasan lah. Sekarang pukul lagi seminit eh. <coughs> Sekejap lah. Pagi-pagi. Biasalah kan pagi-pagi. Bimalan. Awak on awak ada ke? Ke Bimalan on pasal tertidur balik. Tak dengar dia reply saya pun di malam ni. Before that saya nak pergi tengok you all punya tanda ke. Sekejap. Time table hari ni kelas pukul 11 ada BBL. Lepas tu besok kelas dengan saya juga pagi. Okay, dah lapan setengah ni Kita nak tunggu yang lain-lain masuk ke Kita nak continue je kelas hmm? You on? Just 43 of you kita tunggu sekejap lah eh. Kita tunggu lagi dua minit. Nitya, Mama Iqbal, Arunisa Awal, siapa lagi ni? Nur Shakira, Shi Wing, Shi Wing, Siti Aisyah, Syamimi. Bimalan mana Bimalan? Nak dengar suara sikit Bimalan? Bimalan ni Bimal ke? Mana ni? Tidur ni. Yamuna ada Yamuna? Yamuna. Morning doktor. Ada eh? Ada. <laughs> ada. Ada. Right. Because I cannot see your face so I will not know whether you are sleeping with me or you fall back to sleep because uh, this morning class kan. Okay. <laughs> okay, just 50 of you. We have another 11. No. Yeah, 11. Are we going to wait for the rest or we want to start straight away? Any response? Nak start ke nak tunggu? Buat say you. Tunggu sekejap. Tunggu sekejap lah eh. Okay. Hmm. Let me see after you. 
You boleh dengar saya clear eh? Ada lagging lagi tak suara saya? Saya cicat lah sikit sebelum start kelas. Nanti I cakap-cakap you fall asleep. Okay. Tak lain, saya sambil saya minum kopi dulu. Ya, dah breakfast ke? Dah, sebab nisak bangun awal kan dah breakfast. <coughs> Oh yes, uh, while waiting for the rest for another seven of you, I want you to remind I want to remind all of you to update your uh, profile in Clip platform for those who haven't update according to the video I shared previously. Please do so because uh, this is really important for your coming exam later. So nanti kita akan tengok lah ada yang tak. Tak update dia punya nombor metrik, tak update dia punya apa, uh, dia punya nama penuh dia, ada yang still letak uh, glamour name, hmm. nama manja dekat dalam uh, clip. So please update your profile, put your uh, name according to your identity card. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so 54 of you, I think we should have start right now because for oxygen transport, I have a lot of slide, but somehow for the carbon dioxide transport, there's only half of this uh, slide. So if you are not able to finish this uh, lecture, we will continue tomorrow uh, with a subsequent study carbon dioxide transport. Okay, but somehow oxygen transport is um, I consider very easy and straightforward lecture. If you digest it carefully, you can easily understand lah. Uh, it's not complex. It doesn't have uh, so much formula like the other lecture, okay? So, let's move on to the oxygen transport. So, bila kita cakap pasal oxygen transport, we already know it's about the uh, gaseous, gaseous exchange, gaseous of the oxygens. Alright. So, let's move on to the learning outcome first. At the end of the lecture, you should be able to describe the compositions of air. What kind of air? So, air in here is the air in the environment, is the air compositions in your lungs, is the, what else? Whatever conditions, whatever place that have an A, air, so we're going to uh, describe the compositions of that air, right? And then the transport of the oxygen, uh, uh, including the concept of the diffusion, okay, how the diffusion occur, what about the pressure gradient, the, the pressure gradient in the air space um, might have an influence on the oxygen transport. Okay, the, from the atmosphere, from the outermost, outermost uh, space to the innermost space until to the tissue level. Okay, and then what about the pressure of the uh, oxygen inside the oxygenated and the oxygenated blood? Okay, and then we're going to discuss on the role of the hemoglobin itself. Of course, I bet you know the component that carry oxygen in our blood circulation is hemoglobin. But not only hemoglobin, eh, nanti kita akan discuss. And what form is the oxygen is being transported? And what are the factors that will affect the efficiency of the oxygen delivery in our tissue? And then... We're going to discuss about the concept in the physiology in the transporting of the oxygen known as the Bohr effect. Okay. So before we go further, let's understand about the lung and its surface area. From the previous class on the pulmonary circulation, I did mention that the lung surface is larger. What else? There are a lot, the, the pulmonary capillary itself, they form a a mesh, which we call it as the pulmonary bedding. Sebab apa? Because to make the uh, gaseous exchange be more, much more efficient. Okay, if we take a look at the lung structure, actually, in both of our lungs, we will have around 300 million of the of the alveoli. Sangat banyak. But when you spread the, uh, this alveoli, you might see the surface area is around 70 meters square. Sangat besarlah, just like you have a 
a spread of cloth ke kan kain and then you spread 70 meters square so sangat besar okay so of course its purpose is to allow rapid diffusion of of gas so kalau kita ada permukaan yang lebih luas contohnya like the process of evaporation evaporation ingat tak proses dia berlaku macam mana dekat the surface area so the larger the surface area the larger the evaporation process similar to the lung surface the larger the surface area of the alveoli so the larger or the rapid the diffusion of the gases will occur okay now let's move on to a factor that might affect the rate of gas diffusion number one it should be the thickness of the respiratory membrane Okay, if you remember on my previous class, I did mention on the permeability of the membrane. So, I did mention that pulmonary capillary is just like a sheath. So, it's very thin. Why it is very thin? To allow efficient diffusion of gas. Similar to this uh, factor that affect the gas diffusion, is actually reflect back on the pulmonary capillary uh, characteristic, the thickness of the respiratory membrane. And this process is, the thickness is actually inversely proportionate to the rate of diffusion. So, the thinner the layer, the higher the rate of the diffusion. <clears throat> and second one is the surface area. So, I did mention earlier just now, the pulmonary capillary, the surface area is like a thin, a sheath. So, the surface, similar to the, uh, the surface of the alveoli, there are a larger surface area if you spread it off. So meaning that the larger the surface area, the larger the rate of gas diffusion. Similar to the solubility, the point number three, you can see that carbon dioxide is actually much more soluble than oxygen. Okay, this is very important. Okay, number four is the molecular weight of gas. Okay, molecular weight ni talking about the chemical weight of the uh, molecule itself. Macam contoh carbon dioxide, you ada berapa molecules? You ada carbon and oxygen. But when you sum up, uh, berapa molecule dia, ada ingat. Similar to the oxygen, molecular weight dia is berapa? Oxygen is 16, right? 8 plus 8 kan? So 16. <coughs> Alright, and then number 5 is the pressure gradient. Pressure gradient is very important. This one is similar to the uh, masa awak belajar in a CBS module by which the pressure gradient will influence the rates of the blood flow. But in this case, we are talking about the pressure gradients of a gas. So the higher the pressure gradients of a gas, so it will influence the rate of the diffusion. Yang masa blood flow tu kita cakap pasal pressure gradient of the liquid, of the blood. But this one, pressure gradient of the gas. <coughs> <clears throat> Alright, let's move on to the oxygen transport. So, oxygen delivery system is composed of the lung and cardiovascular system. Okay, contohnya you ada a very <clears throat> effective lung but your heart might, be, might have a problem. So, you still belum ada effective delivery system. Okay, so meaning that lung must work together with the cardiovascular systems in order to make sure that the gaseous exchange occur effectively. Contohnya, eh, when you do an exercise, for example, when you do an exercise, your cells inside your body need to carry out, need to increase the metabolism inside your body. So any tissue of your body needs a lot of ATP. So meaning that they need a lot of oxygen. When they need a lot of oxygen, meaning that you need a high blood blood flow and you need a effective or rapid gaseous exchange. So if you only rely this on a lung function but the cardiovascular system does not help the lungs to do the activity <clears throat> to increase the blood flow, so the gas inside your body will not be not be enough to supply the metabolic cells. Okay, now let's move on to the amount of oxygen delivery. So, amount of the oxygen delivery will depend on the amount of oxygen entering the lungs. So, let's say you duduk dekat tempat yang confined space, a very close area. You don't have, you do not carry out any exercise or whatever. You are in your resting state. 
but somehow in that closed area you don't have enough oxygen. So this will not aid the oxygen delay delivery. You must have enough amount of oxygen to enter the lungs. Number two, you must have pulmonary gas exchange. So your pulmonary, your lung must effectively uh, carry out gaseous exchange in order to ensure that the oxygen delivery is enough. Number three is the blood flow to the tissue. Lung you dah carry out its function very well. They dah buat dah kerja dia to transport or to filter the gas to give away the oxygen and to take away the carbon dioxide. But somehow the blood flow that supply the oxygenated blood to the tissue is not efficient. So tak boleh jadilah. Okay. Number four is the blood oxygen carrying capacity. So blood oxygen carrying capacity is actually referring to the functions of the blood itself. You dah ada blood flow to the tissue very well. Pulmonary gases exchange, perfect. Amount of oxygen entering the lung, enough. But somehow, your blood itself are not able to carry the oxygen effectively, especially we are talking about the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin tak cukup ke, hemoglobin rendah lah. So, the blood will not carry the oxygen effectively. Pun tak boleh jadi. So, all of these factors will depend the oxygen delivery process. Okay? So far? Okay, now let's move on to the amount of oxygen in the blood. So, what are the things? Uh, ni, dia nak reflect point number four. So, what are the things that uh, determine the amount of oxygen in the blood is that the amount of the oxygen dissolved. Okay, yeah. So, tadi, just now we are talking about the point number four. And this point below is reflecting the point number four. If the amount of the oxygen is enough, so the amount of oxygen carried in the blood will be perfect. And then, what are the things that determine the blood oxygen carrying capacity is the hemoglobin concentrations in the blood. Hemoglobin must be optimal. If you have low level of hemoglobin, right, but somehow all of this is lacking, all of this is perfect, sorry, but you have low amount of hemoglobin, so the oxygen carrying capacity will be disrupted. Similar to the hemoglobin affinity towards the oxygen. Right now, just now, I mentioned that you have low levels of hemoglobin. But for third point, you have enough amount of hemoglobin, but somehow hemoglobin undergo the defect. So it cannot carry, you have enough oxygen, but this hemoglobin cannot carry oxygen effectively. So it will disrupt the oxygen delivery in by the blood. Okay, now let's understand about the respiration process. In respirations, we have external respirations and we also have internal respirations. Nanti orang cakap external respiration tu macam kita ambil the gas from atmosphere masuk ke dalam lung. No, it is not. External respirations is actually we're talking about the diffusion of the oxygen from the air in the alveoli. Faham eh? Maksudnya tu dah external dah. Okay, daripada ini kita ada alveoli, ini kita ada blood circulation. So, from the alveoli, move into the blood in the pulmonary capillary is considered as the external respi respirations. And diffusions of the carbon dioxide in the opposite direction. Okay, oxygen masuk, carbon dioxide keluar, and this process occur in the alveoli, we call it as the external respi respiration. So, what about the internal respirations? So, internal respirations is similar process but somehow it occur at the tissue tissue level. Boleh eh? Tadi external berlaku di alveoli and internal respiration is actually coming from the blood capillary to the tissue tissue level. Tak kisahlah dekat masa ke, dekat mana-mana region. From the blood, ni dekat systemic circulation eh. Ha, ni systemic circulation. Senang nak cerita. Kalau yang external respiration tadi, dekat Ah, we jot down sikit. External respiration tadi dekat palmo, pulmonary circulation. Okay. So internal internal respirations, the 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 exchange of the gas of the oxygen, uh, the exchange of the carbon dioxide occur at the tissue level. Okay. In the gaseous exchange, right? Gaseous exchange. 
occur partially by occur by the partial pressure gradient. What does that mean? So in order to make sure that the gaseous exchange occur, what are the things that we need is partial pressure gradient. Kalau kita kata partial pressure tu maksudnya pressure lah. When we talk about gradient, maksudnya dia cakap pasal dua tempat yang ada gradient yang berbeza. Ada satu kawasan yang high gradient, ada satu kawasan yang low gradient. So this will determine the occurrence of the gaseous, gaseous exchange. If let's say you ada oxygen, oxygenated blood, you have deoxygenated blood, but somehow the pressure gradient between these two region is not different, so therefore the gaseous exchange will not will not occur. Okay, nanti saya tunjuklah partial pressure gradient ni macam mana. Okay, so before that, let's understand about what is partial partial pressure. So partial pressure of gas, kalau you tengok simbol ni, dia buat P besar ni, lepas tu dia buat gas. Maksudnya partial pressure of a certain certain gas. Kalau I cakap partial pressure of oxygen, I will write P O2. Tu maksudnya partial pressure eh. Kalau dia kata partial pressure of uh, CO2, P CO2. Ha, ni maksudnya gas dia. Okay. That is the partial pressure of gas. According to the Dalton's law, ha, ni you kena ingat sikit lah. The total pressure of a gas mixture is equal, equal, equivalent to the sum of all pressure that the gas would exert independently when the barometric pressure is 760mm of mercury. Mana dapat 760mm, 760mm mercury ni? 760mm mercury ni. Atmospheric pressure. Yes, it's the atmospheric pressure dekat mana? Dekat? Uh, uh, C? Level. Yes, mesti dekat C level. Ha, kita cakap semua-semua ni adalah dekat C level. Kenapa penting sangat? Very important. Because when you are in the air, for example, you tengah fly, nak pergi mana, sekarang tak boleh lah kan, nak pergi UK ke, nak jumpa Trump ke, whatever, Ah, uh, nanti kena fan saya sebut Trump. Okay, so, atmospheric pressure dekat air is different. Okay, in the air is different. So, 760 is the barometric pressure at the sea level. This is very important. Sebab nanti dia akan tanya, kalau awak duduk kat bukit, jadi apa? Kalau awak duduk dekat uh, dasar laut, okay, under the sea, the pressure, di pressure dia jadi apa? Okay, cuba saya, saya nak tanya sikit. When you dekat tempat yang high altitude, pergi Everest, partial pressure dia increase ke decrease? Decrease. Ha? Decrease. Decrease. Ha. Hmm. Kalau you ada partial, kalau you duduk dekat uh, bawah laut, maksudnya dia akan decrease lah kan terbalik. Hmm. Sebab tu kalau you pergi masuk diving, siapa yang diving, you akan pakai apa nama meter tu. Ha, saya tak tahu dah, ingat dah saya. Okay, so itu yang akan determine the partial pressure, dia akan maintain the oxygen uh, release into your into your lung. Very important. Ha, saya ada satu cerita lah. Ha, saya cerita sikit iklan. Saya ada kawan yang dia memang ada seorang anak aja. Dia bawa anak dia masa tu 12 years old. Dia bawa anak dia pergi diving. Uh, when they are diving, diving kan pressure dekat bawah dia sangat tinggi. And then um, dia pergi jauh lah juga. Diving saya tak tahu berapa meter dia pergi. And then anak dia jadi uh, panic. Uh, panic attack. And then anak dia terus naik ke atas, ke dasar. Ha, bila dia naik ke dasar, ha, lang saya ada problem lah. Ada nitrogen, nitrogen bubbles. Sian anak dia dah meninggal. So, siapa, for those who have a wish to go for diving, belajar betul-betul diving skill eh. Very important. Okay. Alright, so let's move on to the Dalton's law. Dalton's law cakap, total pressure of a gas mixture is equal to the sum of pressure of all gas. Maksudnya, total 760mm mercury ni adalah gas apa? Ha, gas A plus with gas B, plus with gas C, plus with gas D, or whatever miscellaneous gas that presence in the air. Alright? Okay. So, partial pressure of gas is the pressure of a specific gas in a mixture. Okay. Ni kita tengah cakap pasal partial pressure of one gas is the pressure of a specific gas in a mixture. Partial pressure of gas depends on its percentage in the total atmospheric pressure. Okay, for example, dekat atmospheric air, we have nitrogens, we have oxygens, we have a carbon dioxide, we have a small amount of water molecules, water droplet, water vapor. Okay, and then a small quantity of the other gas, miscellaneous gas, you have, what else? Hydrogens and so forth. Okay, so total of it will become 760 mm of mercury. Okay, 
Now let's take a look at the partial pressure of gas at the atmosphere. At the atmosphere, let's focus on the oxygen. You might see that the oxygen we have 20.9% of the concentration. Kalau you tambah 78 plus 20 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.5, you akan dapat 100%. Alright? But the concentrations or the percentage of the oxygen is 20.9%. In certain books, you might find it write down like 21%. So, sama sajalah. Okay, what about the partial pressure of gas for the carbon dioxide? So, carbon dioxide is 0 0.04. Sangat-sangat sikit dekat atmosphere. Okay, and then how did I get 159 ni? So, I multiply lah. Alright, so 760, 20.9 over 100 multiply with berapa tadi? Macam mana nak dapat? Nanti tanya saya pula macam mana nak dapat 159 is Saya dah tulis tak? Okay, ha, ni adalah how do we calculate the partial pressure. So partial pressure of oxygen for example, just now I mentioned that is 20.9%. So, jadilah 20.9 over 100, you multiply with 760 millimeter of mercury at the barometric pressure, you will get 159 millimeter of mercury. Okay, that's how I get 159.0 millimeter of mercury. But, the compositions for 159 is actually at the atmospheric air. Ha, kita belum cakap lagi, the partial pressure of the oxygen in the alveola, we do not talk about the partial pressure of the oxygen in the blood but what right now we are talking about the partial pressure of the oxygen in the atmosphere. <coughs> okay, what about the relationship for humidified gas? Apa maksud humidified gas? Humidified gas tu maksudnya gas tu contoh eh uh, you ada air, okay you ada oxygen in the atmosphere once you inhale in your body temperature is not similar to the outside temperature. Your body temperature is a little bit warm, warmer. So when it's a little bit warmer, it will form a water drop, droplet. The air that enter into your nose, into your respiratory tract will be humidified. So when it has been humidified, so this oxygen will interact with the water, water molecules forming a water, water vapor. Nanti kita akan tolaklah water vapor tadi. So, dia akan jadi partial pressure of the oxygen to become 150 milliliter of mercury. So, kita akan tolak yang humidified air tadi, 47 milliliter of mercury. Alright. That's why, when you take a look at the atmosphere air, the partial pressure of the oxygen is 159. But, when the air has gone, has been humidified in your respiratory tract, it will become 149.3. Why 149.3? Because kita dah tolak humidified, humidified air, humidified gas tadi. But then, when it further enter into your alveolar, the partial pressure of the oxygen will further de decrease, reduce. Alamak, tadi dah banyak dah dekat atmospheric air. Tapi bila kita dah sedut-sedut masuk dekat alveolar, makin kurang. Cukup ke? Ha, nanti kita akan tengok either 104 of uh, 104 millimeter of mercury of oxygen is enough to undergo the gaseous exchange, is enough to supply our tissue in the body. And if you take a look at this one, the expired air, selepas you dah tarik nafas, semua masuk dekat alveola, the undergo gaseous exchange, the expired air right now having 120 pula oxygen, makin bertambah pula. Supposedly, it should be reduced. But why it is in? increase. Nanti kita akan tengok lah kenapa dia bertambah. Alright. Okay. Ni yang saya cerita tadi. When you inhale, 159. Alright. Sam masuk dekat uh, lungs you, uh, dekat you punya trachea, you punya respiratory tract, it will become 149. When it go into your alveoli, 104. When you exhale out, 120. So, why you exhale out, the partial pressure of oxygen is increased is because you have to consider the concentrations of the oxygen dekat dalam surround surrounding. Tadi dekat surrounding kita, kita dah ada partial pressure of oxygen. Mm -hmm. 159 mm of mercury. But coming out is 100 mm of 
mercury. It's actually you campur dua ni, you divide by 2. So, you akan dapat lah lebih kurang 120. Because why? This one is lack of oxygen. This one high in oxygen. So, dia akan cancelling each other lah. Ha, dia akan jadi average amount of oxygen. That's why the expired air will become 120. Okay. So, dia, selain daripada tu, when the expired air, okay, ni additional line, when expired air having 120 millimeter of mercury, that's why we are able to do CP, CPR. Nanti orang tanya kenapa kita nak buat CPR, bukan ke CPR tu banyak content of carbon dioxide ke, tapi kenapa CPR work? That because the partial pressure of the oxygen in the exhaled air is 120. Okay. Boleh nampak tak gambar dekat atas ni? Clear tak? Ke kecil? Kalau kecil, you boleh tengok dekat screen you yang sebelah kiri sini akan ada button plus, you boleh tekan dekat sana eh. Alright. Oh, okay, now. Sekejap, sekejap. Message. Dia orang hantar saya message ke? Sekejap saya buka message dulu. Oh, attendant list. Alright. Okay, now let's move on to this diagram. If what you can see, in the expired air 120, when the uh, sini lain, when the inspired air 160, okay, dia masuk dekat alveolus, it will become 100. When the partial pressure dekat alveolus is 100, the partial pressure of the oxygen in the pulmonary artery is 40. Dekat mana high pressure? So, the high pressure is the alveol, alveolus. The low pressure is in the blood capillary. So, right now, we already have the partial pressure grade gradient. Partial pressure gradient. Ini yang kita cakap. This is what I mentioned about the partial pressure gradient. When the pressure in one area and another pressure in the other area is different to each other, it will form the partial pressure gra gradient. So this one high partial pressure of oxygen will move to the low partial pressure of the oxygen in the pulmonary artery. And, and what happened to the carbon dioxide pula? Carbon dioxide is what you can see. The partial pressure in the capillary, pulmonary capillary is high and the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide in the alveoli is low. So it will move, carbon dioxide will move to the high partial pressure to the low partial pressure. Alright. This is the point which I mentioned for you just now. Alright. So, the partial pressure will determine the movement of the oxygen and carbon dioxide between the atmosphere to the lung, between the lungs to the blood and between the blood to the to the tissue. Maksudnya, dekat any regions, any regions that we talk about the gaseous exchange, there must be the partial pressure gradient to allow the diffusion of the gas either oxygen or carbon dioxide. Alright, now let's we recap a bit on the partial pressure different. Okay, partial pressure in the atmosphere 760. Partial pressure in the alveoli also pun 760. But the partial pressure in the intrapleural is actually a little bit reduced as compared to the partial pressure in the alveoli. Kenapa? I did mention to you so many times because we want to produce the surfactant. Hmm, so faxton satu satu masalah lain. Ha. Elasticity. Hmm, macam mana? Negative pressure. Yes, ini kita panggil negative pressure tapi dia bukan nilai dia negatif eh. Maksudnya negatif compared to compared to the atmosphere. Yes. Ha, you can mention betul-betul. Sometimes you mention tak habis, tu dapat markah separuh. Tu dia tanya kenapa saya dapat markah separuh. Okay, so ini kita create negative pressure because dia nak develop vacuum area. Okay, vacuum area is very important. Okay, kenapa dia penting sangat ni? Kalau tak ada vacuum area ni, lung you tak boleh nak expand. Ha. Lagi satu, you pernah dengar tak orang yang pergi memancing, lepas tu dia kena, apa? Dia kena, apa? Tikam dengan ikan todak. Ikan todak tahu? Ikan, ah, uh, swordfish. Ha. And then swordfish tu kena pergi dekat dia punya lung. So, bila kena dekat dia punya lung, okay, ini tembus. Okay, dia punya lung tembus. And then, this region tak ada lagi dah negative pressure. Dia jadi pressure yang sama. So, this person might have difficulty of breathing because the lung must be high in pressure compared to this one. If not, dia susah nak nak nak, nak inflate. Sama macam, 
Ah ha, sama macam you ada belon, you pernah beli belon parti yang ada jenis belon yang tebal yang, yang tak boleh nak tiup tu. Ada tak? Yang bila you tiup you rasa pipi you akan jadi pedih sebab dia tebal sangat. So that is what happen to up. It's just similar concept to the to the lung. Tapi belon ni once you dah boleh tiup dia separuh, ah ha, dia senang dah nak tiup bagi belon. So similar concept to the lung. The lung is really hard to inflate. Okay. Therefore it must have a negative pressure gradient. Okay, ni sama saja. Okay, now let's move on to the alveolar air has less oxygen and more carbon dioxide because, because of what? Because gaseous exchange has occurred in the alveoli. Tadi saya cakap, uh, mana tadi eh? Inspired air. Tanda sikit. In the inspired air, the pressure of, pressure of the oxygen is 160. But when the oxygen has got into the alveoli, the pressure pressure become 104. Why the pressure pressure become 104? Because part of the oxygen in the alveoli has passed into the pulmonary capillary. That's why the pressure pressure of the oxygen in the alveoli is reduced as compared to the pressure pressure in the atmos atmosphere. Okay? And then he said, inhale air being humidified. Yes, correct. Just now, it's 10 milliliter of mercury. Ataupun 159 kan tadi milliliter of mercury. But once you inhale in, this oxygen, it will react with water molecule. So when it's react with water molecule, you have already reduced a slight amount of the oxygen. That's why point number two, it will become lesser as compared to the inspired air. Okay? Dia dah humidified dah. Dia dah ambil tadi oksigen tadi. And then, look at this question. He said, why partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood become 100 instead of 104? Faham tak soalan ni? Just now, you ada 106. When comes to the alveoli, you ada 104. Sebab apa? Tadi point number 1 and point number 2 I did mention because of the mixture and the exchange of the gas in the alveoli. Number two, because of the humidifying pro process. Humidifying process by which they don't react with H2O. But then, when it goes further into the left ventricles, kemudian they dah pump into the systemic circulation. In the systemic circulation, the partial pressure of the oxygen will be further reduced to become 100. Why is that so? Saya nak tanya kenapa? Dekat atrial jadi makin berkurang instead of 104. Supposedly jadi 104 lah. Tadi dah tukar kat sini dah ada 104. Kenapa tiba-tiba jadi 100 pula? Because some of the oxygen is used by the inner layer of the heart. Okay. okay. Correct. Correct. Another part? Another another reason? For the lung. Nah, do you remember pulmonary circulation? I did mention pulmonary circulation got to supply to the physiological shine. Yes, it's because of the physiological shine daripada bronchial artery vein. Ha, mm. bronchial vein. Sebab bronchial vein carry deoxygenated blood. Ah, ha. into aorta. Yes, pulmonary vein dia akan carry oxygenated blood. Ini deoxygenated mm. blood, tapi ini only mm. 1 to 2% of the cardiac output. So nanti dia akan tambah. So bila dia tambah deoxygenated, campur deoxygenated oxygenated blood daripada pulmonary vein due to the physiologic shunt. Ha, very important eh. Dia boleh tanya dekat soalan MCQ. It will become lesser in the partial pressure of the oxygen. Ha, lagi satu memang betul lah seperti yang siapa cakap tadi. Dia dah guna untuk uh, by the heart and everything. Okay. But you have to remember that the heart has been supplied by the mana? Heart siapa yang supply dia? Oxygenated ke deoxygenated? Oxygenated. Okay. So, next slide is about the partial pressure gradient at different different region. So, different region will have different partial pressure gradient. Okay, now let's take a look at the partial pressure gradient. Kita baru cakap partial pressure ni, belum cakap tentang oxygen exchange lagi. Okay, now let's take a look at the partial pressure gradient in the tissue. Dekat tissue, partial pressure gradient jadi 40. Okay, in the capillary, okay, systemic capillary eh, now we are talking about systemic capillary, it's partial pressure of the oxygen is 
and the partial pressure of oxygen in the tissue is 40 mm of mercury. Therefore, 60% of the oxygen daripada sini will move to the tissue, to supply the tissue. But, uh, tapi saya nak cakap pasal partial pressure of carbon dioxide, nanti kita akan cakap in the carbon dioxide transport. But right now, we're talking about the uh, diffusions of the gas from the uh, pulmonary, uh, sorry, from the uh, blood capillary down into the tissue. Okay, so, dia akan geraklah daripada high partial pressure to low partial pressure. Konsep dia sama je dengan carbon dioxide. Tapi nanti kita akan cakap dalam topik carbon dioxide. Now, let's move on to the gas transport to the periphery. Macam mana? How do gas has been delivered to the peripheral tissue? Dia bawa macam mana ni? Kita ada blood supply semua tapi dia bawa macam mana? Okay. So, oxygen has been delivered into the tissue via two form. Form number one is via the dissolved one. Maksudnya, it will be dissolved in the blood circulations, okay, in the fluids, in the blood fluid, blood plasma. Number two, it will be combined with the hemoglobin. But however it is, the point number two is the dominant functions of the blood by which the oxygen will be carried most by the hemoglobin. I'm talking about oxygen. It's not similar with the carbon dioxide. Okay, carbon dioxide a bit different. Oxygen it will be carried most by the hemoglobin as compared to the dissolved, dissolved form. Okay, according to the Henry law, what he said is that the amount of the oxygen dissolved in the liquid is proportionate to its partial, partial pressure and its solubility. So Henry mentioned two points. So how does the gas has been dissolved in the liquid? He's talking about liquid. is actually due to the partial, partial pressure and also solubility. Let's say I have two type of I have two type of gas, gas A and gas B. Gas A and gas B has similar partial pressure, but solubility is different. This one high solubility, this one low in solubility. Meaning that I will found gas A most in the compared to gas gas B. So Henry state the amount of the gas has been dissolved in a certain liquid, tak kisahlah liquid jenis apa, but he's talking about liquid, it depends on its partial pressure and also its solubility. Why do I mention about solubility? Because earlier in this lecture, I mentioned that carbon dioxide is much more soluble as compared to the oxy oxygen. Nanti dalam lecture carbon dioxide, you akan perasan why partial pressure of carbon dioxide is just a little different between two regions compared to the partial pressure of the oxygen between two regions. Okay, saya emphasize balik lah eh. Kalau untuk tengok dekat sini, yang tadi saya cakap tadi, partial pressure of oxygen, saya nak awak ingat betul-betul dalam kepala awak sebab nanti saya nak suruh you all compare dengan carbon dioxide. Partial pressure of oxygen is 100 at uh, capillary, okay, systemic capillary, but partial pressure dekat of oxygen in the tissue 40. But, Partial pressure of carbon dioxide, 45. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the capillary is 40. Nampak tak? Dua ni, different dia is only 5. These two, the different is 6, 60. Why there must be 100 of oxygen in the, this one? Why must be 40 but carbon dioxide 45 and 40 only? Because of the solubility, solubility. of the gas. Yes, now please bear in mind this one. So, meaning that solubility has a major uh, influence on the gas diffusion. Okay, so I did mention about the Henry law. Alright, this one, let's move on to the concentrations of the gas dissolved. How can we calculate the concentrations of the oxygen inside the blood? How can we calculate the concentrations of carbon dioxide in the blood? So, to, make, to calculate the concentrations of the dissolved gas is that the partial pressure of the gas you multiply with the solubility. Cx is the concentrations of the dissolved gas in 100 milliliter of blood, right? But Px is partial pressure of that of that gas. Solubility is the solubility lah. Okay, now let's uh, only apply to dissolved gas that are free in solution not include in the bound form. Maksudnya, this one, saya nak you faham lah nanti you baca, you dah faham terus. This one, only for soluble, soluble gas. 
Kalau let's say tadi you kata oksigen also being carried by the hemoglobin, right? Ah, uh, They're not applicable for hemoglobin. We only want to calculate the gas that dissolve freely in the plus plasma. Plasma sahaja dalam plasma. Okay, so the solubility of oxygen is 0.003 in 100 milliliter of blood. So how are you going to calculate 100 milliliter of oxygen? Mana datang 100 milliliter ni pula? Ni adalah partial pressure of oxygen. Eh sorry, partial pressure of oxygen dekat dalam mana? Dekat dalam arterial, arterial blood. Nanti you tanya saya mana datang 100 ni? Ha, you jot down sikit. 100 milliliter of gas in the artery of blood, you multiply with the oxygen solubility in 100, you will get 0.3. Meaning that 0.3 ml of oxygen dissolve dekat dalam arterial, arterial blood. Okay, yang tadi yang hantar pergi dekat tisu tadi, dekat dalam, pulmonary, eh, dekat dalam capillary tadi, ada 0.3 ml of dissolved oxygen. Cukup ke? 0.3 dissolved oxygen dekat dalam kapilari nak supply the cells? Ah, nanti kita akan tengok. Oxygen have low solubility. So 1.5% sahaja will be in the plasma. So the remaining which is the 98.5% of oxygen will be combined with the hemo hemoglobin. Meaning that yang kita kira tadi, ah ni yang 0.3 tadi yang kita kira tadi, 0.3 is actually for 1 uh, in 100 ml of blood ni eh? so only 1.5% so you kira lah remaining dia 98.5% tadi ni berapa liter has been carried has been in a bound in a bound form so 100 ml of arterial blood at 100 ml of mercury contain only 0.3 ml oxygen so this one CO is cardiac output ni eh? so cardiac output You multiply with the dissolved oxygen, dissolved oxygen only, you get 5 liter. Multiply with 0.3 dalam 100 milliliter of blood tadi, you will only have 15 milliliter of oxygen. Okay, 15 milliliter of oxygen per minute. It is obviously that this way the transporting oxygen is in inadequate. Berapa banyak kita nak pakai oksigen dalam masa satu minit? Kalau kita kira 1.5 yang dalam dissolved form tadi, ni you tulis sikit eh, ni dissolve form nanti you terlepas so dissolve form tadi only 15 ml of oxygen will be supplied in each cardiac output, maksudnya satu minit 15 ml saja. so memanglah tak, cu tak cukup, kenapa tak cukup why, that's because at rest per minit we need 250 ml tadi kalau dalam dissolve form ni min uh, you kena pakai 250 ml per minit. Ha, tadi you supply hanya 15 ml per minit. Cukup ke? Ha, kalau nak harap dekat dalam dissolve form saja, you tak ada hemoglobin inside your blood circulation. So obviously tak akan hidup dah dekat dalam dunia ni because your cell cannot be supplied by it but it cannot be supplied by enough enough oxygen. So 15 ml for 1.5% okay obviously it's not It's not enough. Therefore, you need a hemoglobin. So, what is hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is heme with globin. Heme tu apa? Heme tu iron with a porphyrin ring. Globin is the pro protein. So, we have the iron protein. So, globin has four protein polypeptide. There are two alpha and two beta chains. So, what make this polypeptide different is the number of the amino acid sequence. So for the alpha, they have 141 of the uh, amino acid sequence and for beta, they have 146 amino acid sequence. So difference in this amino acid sequence will give to different types of the uh, hemoglobin type. For example, we have the hemoglobin type A which resembling the hemoglobin adult, hemoglobin yang kita ada lah kalau you are normal person. For hemoglobin F is hemoglobin for fetals. So usually in fetals, they have this hemoglobin F but gradually when they have birth, so this one will be replaced by the hemoglobin B. And then another type, we have the hemoglobin S. So what make hemoglobin S different from hemoglobin A is the sequence in the amino, amino acid. So contohnya, kita ada amino acid uh, valine compared to amino acid Uh, porphyrin ke whatever, 
eh, sorry, eh, hemo, eh, amino acids or glycine ke, so it will determine that that is the hemoglobin, hemoglobin S. So hemoglobin S is stand for sickle. Okay, so hemoglobin and red blood cell productions are actually under the control of the erythropoietin. So erythropoietin apa? Erythro is red blood. Okay, poietin ni is product production. So red blood cell punya production. Hormone for red blood cell production is known as the erythropoietin. So what are the organ that produce the erythropoietin? Is the kid, kidney. Ah, oh, pula. Kita ada, uh, kita ada apa? Backbone. Kita ada uh, stem stem cells and whatever. Okay, like in our spinal cord. But then, the roles in product in producing red blood cells is belong to the kidney. Then, why or how the kidney knows that our blood is lab in the hemoglobin? Okay, our kidney ni, instead of just to ask you, hey, go toilet lah, you have excess water. Or, oops, conserve the water because you don't have enough water. They also control the production of red blood cells by which in the kidney, Okay, you ada satu kidney ni. Ha, dekat kidney ni, dia ada satu sensor. Nanti you akan belajar. Akan belajar kat mana ni? Topik. Ni dulu mana saya tengok. Dekat kidney, you akan ada satu sensor. I don't know his name. So, they have one this endothelial cells. Okay. This endothelial cells will detect. They akan detect the level of oxygen. Because kidney it will filter, filter apa? Dia akan filter blood kan? Guna gromerulus kan? Haa, awak belajar dah ke kat mana? Saya rasa awak belajar dah. Masa SPM ke kan? Okay, so it will filter blood. So, once it's filter blood, it will detect the level of the hemo, hemoglobin. It will not detect the level of hemoglobin, but it will detect the level of the oxy, oxygen. When the level of the oxygen is low, then it should tell, wait, we don't have enough red blood cell lah. Uh, so, produce red blood cell lah. Uh, so, kidney will mention to the other organs to produce the red blood cells. And usually, in men, they have high level of the hemoglobin as compared to women because they have androgen hormone. So, androgen also will stimulate the production of the hemoglobin. Okay, what about the hemoglobin S? So, I mentioned just now, hemoglobin Different type of hemoglobin is determined by the presence of the amino acid C sequence. So in uh, HBS, they has valine instead of the glutamic acid. Uh, so nanti dia akan akan buat lah protein sequence. So buat 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 protein sequence, and then they notice, oops, this person punya red blood cells ada valine. Uh, so bila dia ada the presence of valine, is determine the HB. HBS. So, there are the sickle cell anemia, for example. So, the oxygenated form in hemo in this hemoglobin is poorly soluble. Kenapa masalah dengan sickle cell anemia ni? Orang yang ada sickle cell anemia ni, dia punya the oxygenated hemoglobin ni will form uh, crystalline. Uh, dia akan form crystallized. Uh, dia akan form crystalline. So, crystal, awak tahu kan, bila dia crystal, maksudnya dia akan lebih ke keras. Uh, and then, it will result changes in red blood cells also. When it cause changes in the red blood cells, so certain red blood cells, it cannot pass to certain regions of the uh, blood vessels. So, it will easily form clots. So, masalah orang yang ada sickle cell anemia tadi. So, the fragility of red blood cells also will increase. Sebab apa? Sebab dia keras. So, dia tak flexible. Dia tak flexible lah. So, it will uh, have a tendency to form throm thrombus. Okay, this one, hmm. okay, ini tak ada apa. Ini cuma nak cerita, uh, each polypeptide chain tu, dia combine with one heme group, okay. But then, hemoglobin molecules, they combine to four molecules. Why it combine to four molecules? Because hemoglobin have two alpha, okay, one, two alpha, and two beta, one, and two beta. So, they have four heme group. So, four heme group will bind to four molecules of oxygen. Meaning that one hemoglobin, one hemoglobin can bind with four molecules of oxygen. Okay. Okay, so the binding of the hemoglobin to the oxygen also is in the reversible, 
reversible forms. So why it should be in reversible form? Because hemoglobin not only going to bind with the oxygen, but it also need to carry carbon, carbon dioxide. Tapi function dia tak sama eh. Hemoglobin carry oxygen, lebih prone to carry oxygen compared to hemoglobin nak carry carbon dioxide. That one kita akan discuss dalam carbon dioxide transport. But however it is, it must be reversible because it needs to be exchanged with the carbon carbon dioxide. Kalau dia tak reversible, dia nak bawa oksigen je, maksudnya oksigen tu nanti dia tak akan deliver to the to the tissue. Now let's move on to the reactions of the hemoglobin and the oxygen. Okay, so oxygen bond with the hemoglobin, jadi oxyhemoglobin. Ini adalah form uh, format untuk to write the oxyhemoglobin. So hemoglobin for bond with it oxygen. Uh, sebab him him ada empat Oksigen ada 8 lah. Jadi 1, 2, 3, 4 hem group. Bind with 1 O2, O2, O2 and O2. Okay. So jadilah 4 uh, hem and 8 molecule of oxygen. So we call it as the quaternary structure of hemoglobin. So why hemoglobin must have this quaternary structure? Kenapa dia kena ada 4 macam ni? Kenapa tak satu je ke asing-asing kan? Separately one-one je. Why they must have a quaternary structure? Because this quaternary structure will determine the affinity of the hemoglobins to bind with the oxygen molecule. Nanti kalau saya tanya, why this hemoglobin must be in a quaternary structure? So, the reason is that it will determine the binding affinity of the hemoglobins towards the oxygen. Okay? Contohnya macam ini. Okay, when the hemoglobin has not bound to any of the oxygen molecule, ini adalah hemoglobin yang kosong lah. Ha, hemoglobin yang kosong macam ni, we call it as the deoxyhemo, deoxyhemoglobin. So, deoxyhemoglobin are actually also called as the tan structure of the hemoglobin. So, during this time, the hemoglobin is not really susceptible, is not really high in affinity towards oxygen. They have low binding affinity towards oxygen. But when one molecule of the oxygen has bind to the hemoglobin, the other hemoglobin, the other ring structure over here will be much more acceptable to the hemoglobin. Contohnya, awak kalau tak kenal orang tu, awak tak terima dia. But then, bila you dah kenal orang tu, you akan jadi lebih menerima. So, it will, once you bind, the affinity of the hemoglobin towards the rest of the oxygen will be in, increased. So, the quaternary structure of the hemoglobin will determine the binding affinity of the oxygen towards the hemoglobin. So, jadi, the high affinity, this one we call as the relaxed configuration of hemoglobin. Tadi kita panggil deoxyhemoglobin. Right now, we call it as the, apa? Ni deoxyhemoglobin. Bila hemoglobin dah bind dengan oksigen, kita panggil apa? Oksidasi hemoglobin. Betul ke? Betul tak? Mereka dengar saya lagi ke? Kita dengar respon dulu. Takut ada yang dah hilang lah. Mixing of blood. Apa ni? Oksidasi hemoglobin. Ha. Kalau saya kata ha. Kalau saya kata oksidasi hemoglobin betul tak? Tak. Tak. Kenapa tak betul pula? So, oxidized hemoglobin tu yang akan precipitate in the red blood cell. Ah, okay. So, memang betul lah. Kita tak panggil dia sebagai oxidized hemoglobin. Ah, oxidized hemoglobin tu dah lain dah. Ah, hemoglobin tu yang oxidized. Okay. Tu maksud oxidized hemoglobin. Kita bukan nak oxidizedkan hemoglobin. But, this hemoglobin are right now are binding towards the oxygen. So, we don't call it oxidized hemoglobin. What we call it as the oxyhemoglobin. Oxy campur hemoglobin. Bukan oxidized hemoglobin. Yes. Okay. This one, when oxy, uh, oxy hemoglobin dissociate to release the oxygen, okay, the heme ion during this time is still in the ferrous, ferrous state. Tadi kita ada ferrum, okay, ion. Tadi kita ada ferrum, okay, this ferrum or ion, dia akan bind to oxygen, right? So, this ion are actually in the ferrous, ferrous state. Even though it has give away the oxygen, dia dah tinggal kosong-kosong dekat sini, firum sorang-sorang dekat sini because dia dah give away oxygen, okay? This still in a ferrous, ferrous state. 
they are not oxidized or ferric ferric state. Kalau ferric state tadi, ah tadi tu oxidize hemoglobin. Kita tak oxidizekan hemoglobin tu, but we just give the oxygen to be carried by the ferrous ion sahaja. So it's still in the ferrous ferrous state. Okay, ah uh, pergi. Okay, oxy hemoglobin is not the same with oxidized hemoglobin. Oxidized hemoglobin also called is the met hema met hemoglobin. Okay, met hemoglobin ni barulah ah uh, dia punya ion is in the ferric state. So when the Hb concentration is high, we call it as the poly polycythemia. So the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood also will be in increase lah because we know uh, the hemoglobin carry oxygen. So high hemoglobin, high oxygen carrying capacity. Okay, so now what about the oxygen saturation? Sekarang berapa? Sembilan dua puluh lapan. Okay, now what about the oxygen saturation? So majority of the oxygen has been transported in blood reversibly. Okay. Bound to the hemoglobin, betul? Why reversibly? Because it needs to give away the oxygen and take carbon dioxide in return. And then the oxygen content in the blood is determined by hemoglobin concentrations, correct? And by the oxygen binding capacity towards the hemoglobin. Okay, correct, but must be in the uh, ability of the hemoglobin to bind to the oxygen. If let's say you have high amount of the hemoglobin, but the hemoglobin is not having high affinity towards oxygen, so the saturations of the blood with the oxygen and the hemoglobin is not be enough. Faham maksud saya kan? They must be completing each other. Alright, so the amount of the oxy hemoglobin form is proportionate to the partial pressure of the oxygen. I did mention this in early of the lecture just now. Saya cakap, the amount of the hemoglobin binds to the oxygen or the amount of the oxygen dissolved into the blood must be proportionate to its partial partial pressure. So, kalau partial pressure dia kurang, so dissolve dia pun akan kurang. Diffusing capability also will be reduced. So, plotting the amount of oxy hemoglobin, maksudnya sekarang kita dah ada uh, hemoglobin yang bind dengan oxygen, which called as the oxy hemoglobin, again, the partial pressure of the oxygen, we will get the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. So, sekarang kita nak plot dah hemoglobin. Okay, oxy hemoglobin nak plot dengan partial pressure. Kita akan dapat graph yang dinamakan sebagai oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. So, the amount of hemoglobin is often expressed as the percentage of hemoglobin that being oxygenated. So, sekarang ni, how do we calculate the amount of uh, oxy hemoglobin? Or how do we calculate the amount of the oxygen bind to the hemoglobin? We count it in the percentage of the hemoglobin that bound to the oxygen. Okay, so this is the graph of the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. Down below here is the partial pressure of the oxygen. Okay, at the lungs you can see that the partial pressure is around 100. Okay, and then this uh, this y axis is the Oxygen saturations of the hemoglobin. Maksudnya percentage of the hemoglobin or percentage of the oxy hemoglobin. Okay, at lungs you can see that the percentage of the saturations or the hemoglobin being saturated by the oxygen is 100 per 100 percent. But when it come to tissue level, kita nampak eh, tadi I ada cakap bila you pergi, uh, you ada blood capillary ke sini, okay, and then you add the tissue kat sini. Alright. Partial pressure of oxygen kat sini. PO2 dekat arterial blood is 100 millimeter of mercury. Right. But then the partial pressure of the hemoglobin over here. Sorry, of the oxygen over here is 40 millimeter of mercury. Kalau you ingat lah. Kalau you tak ingat you tengok balik. Alright. 